the next important insight into the pathogenesis of MS, uh, which was arrived at probably by uh, the 1950s and early 1960s, uh, was the, uh, uh, was the uh, observation that uh, perivenous demyelination, that is a destruction of myelin around blood vessels, was not restricted to MS. It also was a feature of a certain group of diseases uh, that included uh, post-infectious encephalomyelitis, post-vaccination encephalomyelitis, rabies vaccination encephalomyelitis, and uh, in particular the experimental autoimmune disease EAE. All of these were diseases that were known or suspected to be or thought to be autoimmune diseases. Also the hallmark of the experimental autoimmune disease EAE is in fact the presence of perivenous demyelination. Now it's this resemblance, this resemblance between the pathology of MS and EAE that is the basis for our view that MS and EAE are related diseases in the sense that one is known to be an autoimmune disease of myelin. The similarity in the pathology suggests that MS may also be an autoimmune disease of myelin. In uh, 1961, uh, Richard and Mary Bungie and uh, Riss uh, discovered that contrary to the teaching of classical neuropathology, that uh, when myelin is destroyed in the central nervous system, uh, it is capable of regrowing, it comes back again. Now, following this very important uh, original observation by these workers, uh, a number of neuropathologists by the 1980s had discovered that the shadow plaques that are a feature of early MS these are plaques that are filled with palely staining myelin, uh, are in fact remyelinating lesions. In other words, uh, this is evidence that the MS lesion can heal. And the slide is beautiful. It shows axons with beautiful thin little myelin shears on them. In amongst these macrophages, which are thought to be the agents that actually destroyed the myelin. So why did these macrophages come in and eat myelin? And now they're still sitting there replete, filled with myelin debris, in the presence of new myelin growing back on nerve fibres and the appearance of new oligodendrocytes amongst them. Why do all plaques not remyelinate? And of course this idea that MS is characterised by an ultimate failure of remyelination um, has led to the view that perhaps we can reverse this and so uh, now a very uh, important area of ongoing research uh, is research directed at attempting to uh, understand and uh, perhaps reverse remyelination failure in MS. Uh, well now the, the current view of the pathogenesis of MS uh, could be described as one that is drifting somewhat away from the idea that uh, uh, MS uh, is actually uh, equivalent to myelin induced EAE. Uh, the recent findings that suggest that this might be the case uh, there are a number of them. Uh, probably the most important is the fact that in many MS patients there's a, a progressive loss of axons throughout the central nervous system, or particularly in the long tracts, uh, that can't be uh, explained entirely by, uh, by plaques, by the presence of plaques, and also of course the fact that in some MS patients there's progressive atrophy of the whole brain. Uh, there are a number of other features that have turned up in recent years that also have led us to question the relationship between MS and EAE. I'd mention, for example, the fact that at the edge of a rapidly expanding MS lesion, there are relatively few lymphocytes. And this is in an area where oligodendrocytes are beginning to disappear. In EAE, there's really very little pathology that one sees that occurs independently of the presence of a lymphocyte. This uh, uh, view that MS might not be EAE, unfortunately, hasn't led us to any uh, reasonably useful alternative hypothesis and it, it's fair to say that at the present time EAE continues to represent the best laboratory model that we have of MS for the investigation of the disease experimentally. Professor Prinius, can you explain what you mean by and counting? Uh, my feeling is that the next important insight into the pathogenesis of MS. Uh, we'll build on what I think is probably going to prove to be the most important breakthrough in MS research that's occurred since the discovery of EAE. 
namely uh, the report by uh, van der Lennen of the presence of, a, uh, of an antibody directed against astrocytes in some MS patients. Uh, there's a form of MS uh, previously known as de Vick's disease, now referred to as neuromyelitis optica, or NMO, uh, which is characterized by uh, the presence of a whole variety of different autoantibodies in the serum. Uh, now, one of these antibodies is an antibody reactive against astrocytes. Now, recently, Dr. John Parrott uh, and I have completed the study of the earliest lesions that one sees in neuromyelitis optica, a type of lesion described by T. Misu and other Japanese workers. And what we've found is that in these early lesions, there is an abrupt and complete loss of astrocytes around blood vessels. And this is accompanied also by loss of oligodendrocytes. Now this is an important additional piece of information in support of the notion that uh, van der Lennen's antibody is in fact pathogenic. In other words, that it is doing something uh, that is contributing to tissue breakdown uh, or tissue destruction in, uh, in neuromyelitis optica. Uh, this uh, uh, raises uh, obviously a number of uh, really important issues also with respect to MS. Now, here we have a disease, neuromyelitis optica, in which there is perivenous demyelination as a really conspicuous feature, but it is a disease of astrocytes. Now, MS and neuromyelitis optica are extremely similar diseases in many ways, clinically and pathologically. We think that this raises the possibility that in MS also there could be a lesion of astrocytes as the primary cause of the disease or primary site of injury in the disease. Uh, in other words, that MS uh, may uh, be a disease in which uh, myelin breakdown is a bystander effect of, uh, of injury to an astrocyte or some other structure related to blood vessels. In other words, that it is not primarily a disease of oligodendrocytes and myelin. Professor Prinius, I've thoroughly enjoyed your summary of the 2009 Chaco Award Thank you very much. I'm also very proud that you're the first Australian that has been the recipient of the Shaka Award, and I'm very proud that MSRA has been able to support your most recent work. Again, thank you.